Tonight on Behind the Bench, presented by your local Dodge dealer, Rangers head coach John Tortorella and longtime NHL coach Mike Keenan will talk about the blue shirts and all things hockey. It's another session in the film room with Coach Tortorella, and the guys will answer questions from you, the fans. That much more as we go Behind the Bench. Hi, everyone, and it's great to have you with us for another edition of Behind the Bench. I'm Bill Pito, along with Rangers coach John Tortorella and, of course, Mike Keenan. And, Coach, we're really down to the stretch here. Last handful of games, what are you looking for from your team? Just to get better at everything we do. Uh, uh, work on, on the things that we're, playing, we're doing well right now and also work on the things that we're going to have to get better at, uh, our identity, our details, all the stuff that comes with it. Years past, you've had to fight for the spot. This year, you've clinched. Do you have a preference? Well, yeah, it's no question. Yeah. You want to know that you're in. Uh, yeah. I, I was asked that question yeah. last night. Do you start the season? Uh, I forget how it was put to me. It's hard to make the playoffs. It really is. And, and so that's your first goal is to get in. The sooner you can do that, hey, the better. Uh, it, it, it allows you to maybe do a couple little different things, maybe look at a player or look at situations. You're still trying to win all your games because you need to be playing the best you can be as playoffs start. Because uh, my point was is sometimes when you're fighting for the playoff spot, you're at your peak. You're, you're driving no, and driving driving. Yeah, and maybe yeah. when you've clinched, it might not be as easy to get that kind of effort. No, I, I have no problem with this club as far as effort, no matter where we're at. And uh, we feel very fortunate. Uh, and it's really the players that have done their work uh, during the summer and then those early months when we've racked up some points to allow us to be in this spot. Uh, there are other places we want to go. Uh, we want to keep, we want to win as many games as we possibly can because that just helps your whole psyche and your confidence and uh, much, much better feeling now than what we were doing a couple of years ago, fighting for our lives to get in. Do you ever rest a player in, in this type of circumstance? You know what, our team's getting enough rest. We've been really cognizant, uh, especially the last couple of months as far as rest. Uh, you know, I, I look at Ryan Callahan when he banged up his ankle. Uh, uh, if we were in the playoffs, he would have played those games that he missed. Uh, uh, if, it was, if we were in the playoffs. We are in a pretty good position in trying to make the playoffs, so we figured we wanted to just make sure he was going to be healthy. So those little circumstances, you may err on the safer side as far as health, uh, when you're in the situation, but uh, as far as just resting people, we give our team enough rest, uh, we'll be ready to go. What do you do in circumstances where you had a spot wrapped up? Would you rest it, some guys? No, not normally, uh, unless the, they needed some rest, rest for health issues, but uh, I like the idea of keeping them playing, keeping them involved, keeping them in the locker room. Uh, I certainly wouldn't subscribe to what some coaches have done, they clinch it and they send a top player on a vacation or give them a respite for a while. I didn't believe in that. I thought that all players should be part of what's going on. And if they needed a rest, i tell them, we'll give you a practice days off. Yeah. So, Coach, you're not going to send Gabbert to the Bahamas, huh? No, not a chance. <laughs> He'll be on the ice every day. <laughs> now, you started by talking about improving the details. When you talk about details that sometimes need improving, what are you talking about specifically? Well, I'm just doing tape right now before I came out here. Just some, some details as far as board work, uh, protecting a puck when we're trying to break it out, the support coming underneath the puck when we're breaking it out, areas in the neutral zone, which is going to determine which end you're going to play in. Are you going to be back in your end, or are you going to be forechecking? Those type of battles. Uh, a lot of different things. Face-off alignments. Uh, there, there are so many different things that... Your team knows, but the next couple of weeks, I'm just going to show them just short clips as far as just going all over those little details as you go through a game. Ryan Callahan, you touched on him. It, how big an impact does he have when he's on the ice? Because it seems like when he's not there, that, that, that intangible edge that separates you guys, it seems like sometimes it's not there. He's an important man. Uh, uh, when, he, when he was out, uh, I didn't think we were as aggressive as a team. I think he leads the way by example as far as finishing checks, hard on the puck, uh, taking a hit to make a play. A lot of people think it's always about banging the other team. It's about taking a hit, too, to make a play. He, he does all that. He does all the little things. Scores a huge goal, scores huge goals at key times. Uh, yeah, we missed him. We missed him. We, but we just felt, uh, you know, he probably could have played, but he just wasn't been able to push off his foot that well. Uh, we really wanted to get him healthy because he's that important as we go through the stretch and as we enter up into the playoffs. 
Who'd you coach that was like Ryan Callahan, if anybody? Well, I had a few guys where I call them heart and soul. Dirk Graham was our captain in Chicago and the same type of player, real gritty, hard competitor, could play in every situation and was a leader on the team. So, you know, you talk about wrestling players and John had just alluded to it. They've earned that opportunity. So you get the option of, of making some choices that they've earned. It wasn't handed to them. They had worked very hard to get to where they are right now. So those are things that are part and parcel of of why you stress it to your team you explain to your team this is why we work so hard to get where we are we want to give some of our guys a little bit of a break standings really tight at the top of these do you how do you stay on top of who's where don't look don't look no, no. Do you really like do you have a, like today as we take this do you know what the spread is or no not? i don't i, I don't uh, i and, and you know there are you're always getting stuff thrown in front of you as far as stats and all that you you have a basic idea but it's not so much don't, not looking, it's not focusing. It's focusing on your team. I think if our team plays hard and plays the way it's supposed to play uh, and play the right way, your results will come. And uh, it, there's too much other, it, way too many things to do with the 25 plays we got here and then worry about other teams. Because you didn't even know when you clinched that you clinched a spot. I didn't know. JR told me uh, when we were going into the press conference that we had clinched that. And, uh, I knew we were close, and uh, uh, but uh, it, it, there's just too many things that we do not want to miss regarding our team and our preparation each day to, to get too involved in all that stuff. You know it's there, but you just don't get too involved. All right, guys, much to come here on Behind the Bench. We'll go into the film room with Coach Tortorella. We'll find out what gives Carl Haglin the edge. And also up next, we'll take a listen to the open mic is Behind the Bench, presented by your local Dodge dealer, Continue. Where are you going? Where's he going? You're watching Behind the Bench, presented by your local Dodge dealer. Welcome back, everyone, to Behind the Bench. Time now for The Edge, brought to you by Just for Men Mustache and Beard. Let's find out now what gives Rangers rookie Carl Haglin The Edge. Uh, you see me uh, get on pucks, uh, winning battles in the corners and, you know, creating chances. Also, you know, a lot of back checking, try to you know, track the puck as much as possible. You know, there's been some games when I haven't felt felt great, but I, you know, try, uh, still try work 100%. And uh, you know, that's that's what coach uh, demands from us to work hard every night. And there's always been games when everything's been clicking, like you said. Uh, uh, you know, create create a lot of chances, and the puck seemed to just end up on your stick. So, uh, so far so good. But I know I can play play better. Still need some work away from the puck defensively, blocking shots and. Uh, wall play and stuff like that, but he's still just a young man and uh, he has really given us some juice as he's coming to our lineup. It's always a good feeling uh, to get rewarded for your hard work and you know get get a lot of ice time and get to play with good players so so it's easy but uh, it's obviously a, a great feeling it's good for your confidence to to feel like you can do stuff out there. I try to just uh, get better you know uh, First year as a pro, I wanted to, you know, I knew I was going to start out in the A and hopefully get a couple of games in the NHL. That was my goal. Uh, just working hard down there and, uh, you know, it's, it's been uh, better than I expected for sure. The Edge is brought to you by Just for Men, Mustache and Beard. The Rangers keep their edge. You can too with Just for Men. Carl Hagelin did not begin the season with your club, it was in the AHL. Looking back on the decision to start him in the minors, how important has that turned out to be for his success? It was the right decision, and, and I pushed hard. I, I, I wanted to give him the longest look uh, to try to make our team, uh, to get youth into our club, another kid to play with us. Uh, he's probably the fastest skater in the National Hockey League. Uh, it's something I think our team needs. Uh, but we made the right decision in sending him down. He wasn't ready positionally. He, he, he didn't understand exactly uh, how to begin to become a pro within this league. Uh, the guys down there did a great job with him and has come up and really uh, that move during when we lost a couple of games there, that move really get us going in the right direction and uh, he has played very well both with and without the puck. How about a mid-season call up, Mike, that you can recall that helped one of your teams? Yeah, the fellow named Jeremy Roenick. He became a star yeah. in the playoffs and was a big, big reason for our push and success. We, we were a team that was uh, uh, improving and on the rise, just like the Rangers, and made some steps. But when, when Jeremy came, he had won the scoring championship. He was a junior, and he won the scoring champion, the junior tournament in Alaska. And then we had a, a series of injuries, and we were allowed to call him up, and he never went back. And 
played over a thousand games in the National League. I didn't League. know that. How that? Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's great. He came up. He scored four consecutive games. He scored goals. He says, "I'm not going back, yeah. <laughs> you guys. There's He's no way." He's a beauty. He so is a beauty. Story. <laughs> that's yeah. great. You know, as coaches, you never know, right? Someone gets a chance. Some people make a lot out of it. By the way, just sort of to finish that, he was in training camp in the faucet, JR, you're not ready for this yet. So yeah. in a three or four months, yeah. now he becomes a star player. Well, you look at Hags, you look at Ryan McDonough. He was yeah, kind of... he's a good story. Yeah, too. he's a great story. And now look at him. He, he is and look back and he's getting better and better. So Stu Bickle. Stu Bickle, uh, undrafted guy, uh, comes to our camp and, and we get banged up and uh, just the amount of confidence he keeps on growing. So. We think we have all the, well, I don't think the coaches think they have all the answers, but it's just, you just never know. You, you, you give a guy an opportunity and uh, one guy may fall flat in his face and never play in the league. Another guy who you never thought would do it sticks in there and is, has a great career. So you just never know. All right, guys, time to switch gears. Recently, we had a chance to put a wireless microphone on a Ranger player at practice. So let's hear what was said 